Yeah. I put this picture because I used this trombone slide in my lab, so that was the only like relevant picture I could find on my computer. Another one. So yeah. We're sweating in that picture. Yeah, because I've just been like flying for a long time. Okay, so, um, oh, that's Dave Elitch, if you wondered. But, um, so my lab was about finding the relationship between, like, the length of a thing and the pitch of the sound that it makes, so, like, like a string on a guitar or something, or, like, a harp or a piano, or, like, a trombone. And um, I, it was like late at night and the night before, so I just said that it would be a linear relationship because I didn't really think of like the shape of those instruments. But like, when you think about it, like a xylophone has like the cur the pipes get like curved as it goes down, and like a harp is curved. And I don't know what I was thinking about, but so this is all the stuff that I used, and um. Yeah. I'll get to my uh, <laughs> procedure here. So, there are different procedures for each thing that I used. The trombone was the most complex because I had to like put a piece of paper at the end of a slide and then I like sat with my arm like all the way out, like in front of the position sensor. So it was like, like there's a the position sensor was here, right? And then there's like a piece of paper on the end of my trombone slide, which is like this, and then like all the way extended, so then like that's a trombone. And then like I started the this thing recording and then I started with the microphone recording and um it uh <laughs> so it like recorded the pitch as I like slowly brought the trombone slide in. The microphone recorded the pitch and then this recorded the distance and I like did something in Logger Pro to like make it so that it would measure that because this is like beats thinks that it's like zero and then to like whatever that was but I did some weird like thing in the table to make it switch to like the length of the slide being out instead of the length of the or the distance from the slide to the sensor. That makes sense to everybody. Hey, calculated yeah. yeah. Um and then you know those like tubes that you go like this and it goes <laughs> Yeah. I did one of those and I thought that like if I held it on different spots it would change the like pitch that it made but that was dumb too because it still like resonates through the whole thing so and I didn't realize that when you did it faster it changed so I don't I, but yeah I did that and that was kind of I screwed that one all up but then the xylophone was really good because I like that was really straightforward like it just was a bunch of pipes that you can measure the length of them and then I would like hit the note and then hit the next note and like, does that make sense? Everybody understands how I did that. I just recorded the sound and matched it with the length and graphed it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the trombone thing. And this is the slide length at and then the trombone length or something. And it was hard to like match it up because I had to like start the graph in here and then I had to start recording with the microphone on a different program because I couldn't figure out how to do that all in Logger Pro. And then I had to like find where the distance started to change and match it with like right where the pitch started to change in the recording and then like take little intervals for the frequency to like f put it in Audacity and find the frequency in the like graph analyzer thingy 
and then I had to just put those in by hand, but that's like part of the table. And I was skipping around because sometimes I was moving my arms slowly than others, so it wasn't changing a lot like I was getting bored. But um, then this is the tube thing, and you can see that it doesn't make a lot of sense with the data because it, like, I mean, <laughs> that one doesn't mean anything really. And then this. <laughs> What do you mean, maybe? It's a big tube. I meant centimeters, but I mean it. It would graph it, right? Wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 It, it would show the right relationship. So so <laughs> then that your slope would be off by a hundred. This is the uh, a factor. Um, it's gonna be a source of error. <laughs> this thing. Well, I mean, like that whole experiment just like was a waste because I did it wrong anyway. You so like. The tube would work. But you yeah. still just spin it at the same speed. Yeah, and so there was no way for me to do that really very well, unless I just like pretended to. I don't like spin it with the same omega. Video analysis to check the omega. Um, Change the omega continuously. Even. And so then this is the xylophone, and it was just like it just went from like C to C, I think. So that's like an octave of that xylophone because it was a little. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the uh, graph of the trombone. What? So, it's, this is another thing I screwed up. It's obviously like curving, but I just put a linear fit because <laughs> I was being dumb. And I was just like going with my hypothesis, but then I got to the end and I was like, wait, why did I do that? So I wrote about it in my conclusion for a long time. But yeah, so that's what that graph looked like when I was done with that experiment. And then this, this is the xylophone and it's super obvious that it was like, like an inverse graph or something, right, I think. You, why didn't you put an inverse fit on this? Because I was being dumb. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I got... You could have done one over length, right? Yeah, I know. When I, well, when I got to the end of the experiment, then I realized that it wasn't linear. But uh, I was writing a conclusion, so I didn't But isn't that what you were going in to find out? What? Yeah. And I found it out, I just didn't, I didn't find it out until the conclusion. <laughs> I figured it out by doing it the wrong way. At least you found it out. But... Yeah. And then <laughs> this is the other one. <laughs> is that in meters? <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't clear. The units there? Yeah. That's uh. Yeah. It's that's length in meters, yeah. <laughs> so Wait, what was the slope on that? It's like sinusoidal. The slope? Like a slope. Why does the slope matter? <laughs> okay, so we've talked about a lot of sources of error already, I think. But in addition to those, well, inaccurate measurements, I think, fits into the category of things we've already covered. But then, like, oh, and that one we already talked about. And then, like, whatever noise was in the room, sometimes, like, on the graphs where I was finding the frequency, it would be really hard to find, like, which, like, the graph was, like, sometimes that there's a big spike at, like, a certain spot, and then other times it's, like, just bumpy, and you've got to, like, estimate which is the one, which is the sound that you recorded. What type of graph are you talking about? It shows what the versus what? The graph in Audacity. Okay. I mean, I know what you mean. Do they know what you mean? It's graphing what versus what? I don't know. It's a purple blob. Okay, it's a purple blob of frequency, and well, intensity of that frequency, right? Yeah, I guess so. So it's intensity versus frequency. Okay. And Will's using that to find the most intense frequency. Um, and so that was that, and then, Matt, like, on the trombone thing, it was hard to match up the recording, like, because I started recording in the... I started recording the sound at a different time than I did at with the distance, and I couldn't really figure out a way around that. 
but I uh, did my best to like match up where the sound and the distance would be changing at the same, or like where everything went together. In the end, then I like took some spots out of the thing and did that. But that was hard to do, so I'm not, I'm pretty sure that it's probably a little bit off. But the graph looked kind of okay, except for the linear fit. So, and then other stuff and me being dumb while I was doing this lab. So, we've got another one of these. Who is that? I don't know, it was just on my computer. You put that on my wall for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, um, and I didn't know what to do for error calculations because I didn't know what like accepted values would be for this, except for like the xylophone I could have found like the specific, um, or I could have looked up what pitches it was actually supposed to make if it was like perfect. I could have done that, I suppose. But, yeah. I didn't. What? Do you have an idea of, like, relatively what it could be now? Like, well, what could be? Like, how you could do an acceptive value? Yeah. That's what I was just saying. Like, I would look, like, on the xylophone specifically, I would look up, like, what frequency that note was supposed to make because I could, I, it was close, so I would know what like range it was in, or like what octave it was, and then I would look up what exactly that note, the, like the actual frequency of that specific note is, and then I would have done it like that. But. You also could have done standing waves in an open pipe um, to find the trombone. Okay. You also could have done like the area of the circle I'm sure the xylophone cylinders have a bigger area than the trombone slide. Right. Maybe that could have done something. Yeah, I was also going to do, I thought about doing like a relationship between um, the, the volume of the area that was resonating and the pitch, but that would have been really complicated with the trombone because of the, like, it gets wider in different spots and stuff. Pour water it in it. What? <laughs> Fill it all water. up with water. Yeah. And then it can be like, how much great. water? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, there are things I could have done, but I didn't, because that was being me and dumb. And, uh, so that's the first part of my conclusion. And then, um, <laughs> I did find the relationship, but after I was done with everything, so like, it's, I'm pretty sure it was just an inverse relationship, like, you can just, inverse squared? It seems like, like it one over inverse. x. Inverse. The slope seemed a little steep, so it might be an inverse squared. Well, I mean, the, are you talking about the slope, the numbers of the slope, or just looking at it? No, just looking at it, the relationship was a little, like, an inverse kind of goes more like that, and then the, like, an inverse square kind of goes like, well, maybe it's, it's steep. Maybe down. if he had, like, a larger sample size, it would be different. It could have yeah, that was something better. that I thought I could have done better was if, I, like, I would have been able to see that relationship a lot clearer mm -hmm. with the trombone if I had... Or like with the xylophone, if I had more more octaves, because it was only one octave. And measure the strings. And then with the trombone, I could have done. I just did like from like E to B flat or something, sliding up. So it wasn't a very. And I could have done like more of those, and then put them all on the same graph. Like oh yeah. Different like like gliss on different shelves. And I got you. I don't know. If, but yeah, I mean I could have done a lot more with this, but I didn't. I um, so there's that. And I screwed up the tube thing, we already talked about that. And we've already talked about that too. So, yeah. And that's the end. Admiral Admar. There you go. Questions for our presenter?